What's happening guys? Call Duty Black Ops Kid here. Coming at you with another video. So I've been using the Ryzen 7 3700X for a long time. And I happened to get another one just recently for 150 bucks, And it's like brand spanking new. So I happen to be going to Micro Center. And it's actually the Ryzen's, the new generation of Ryzen's have been appearing pretty frequently on my recommendations. I got this CPU a couple months ago, brand new, of the Ryzen 7 3700 for 160 bucks, and I happened to stumble across a Ryzen 7 5800X at Micro Center. There's a couple different things that kind of suck about switching CPUs, especially on Ryzen, with the new generation, updating your BIOS, having the probability of bricking your motherboard, and whatnot. I've been using the 3700X for quite a while now, and these obviously are the best top-of-the-line CPUs. So, without further ado, I figured why not buy it, and uh, I was like, let's try and do some benchmarks between the 3700X and the 3800X. Two different 8-core CPUs, 16-thread AM4 on the same system with a 2070 Super and uh, 48 gigs of RAM. Uh, the RAM is just kind of weird in my situation. I need it because I need content creation and video games and a bunch of other things on the same system. So let's unbox it because I haven't unboxed this. I've had this for over a week now. I had to update my BIOS for my X570 Asus Tough Gaming motherboard. And uh, let's see how all that stuff works out for me. All right, the Ryzen 7 5800X. 8-core, 16-thread. 3.8 boost, 4.7. Uh, the Ryzen 7 3700X has a 3.6 boost and or 3.6 base, 4.4 boost. So a significant boost as well as IPC performance. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting, honestly. And is that something on that, that thermal paste on my box? What the fuck? So let's open it up. And just comes with a plus some cardboard and CPU. And a Ryzen 7 5000 series. Sheesh. So we just uh, got our successful boot. The Ryzen 7 5800X. Just finishing putting on the AIO. Just wanted to make sure that it was working. And, uh, yeah, so BIOS, I downloaded it to a USB. The USB, for whatever reason, will not indicate on this BIOS. I have the same, I have the X570 Plus Wi-Fi. I have the newest, the BIOS, and it just will not uh, work. I'm not sure why. And uh, so I do have to update my BIOS again. It just kind of sucks because, like, the BIOS that I have had USB disconnectivity issues uh, for certain users. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not looking forward to if that ever happens. But I do need to update my BIOS again. But for whatever reason, I can only get it to update through the Internet. And it fully worked for Ryzen 5000, so it definitely works. Um, to get to the newest, oh, fuck. fuck. So I actually didn't record, uh, some test footage of the Ryzen 7 3800, or sorry, the Ryzen 7 3700X, but on Modern Warfare at Ultra Settings, um, with DLSS on Balanced, I was getting 152 FPS, 118 minimum, I had a 209 as my maximum FPS, and this game is just runs extraordinarily well, especially with the new DLSS optimization. Without DLSS, it gets like uh, it got like 130 FPS uh, on my 3700X. So DLSS in this game probably isn't working that well yet, but it will be coming with greater strides. GTA 5, however, the Ryzen 7 3700 and the Ryzen 7 5800X is about a 30 FPS difference. With the Ryzen 7 doing 117 FPS and the Ryzen 7 5800 doing 140. Regardless, the game looks great, runs well, and um, 
yeah, I will say, uh, compare price to performance on my 3700. I didn't buy it, my 3700 at retail, so right now my 3700 looks like a better option in terms of budget. But uh, the 3800, obviously, getting those extra frames, extra runtime, and has rendered a bunch of videos very, very fast compared to my old Ryzen 7 3700. So that's pretty much it on terms of this on GTA 5. Still a pretty popular game with the kids and still running great on the CPUs. Doom Eternal, on the other hand, doing high FPS on the Ryzen 7 3700, doing 172 FPS. The Ryzen 7 5800 doing 189 FPS. The minimums don't even really make a huge difference here with 142 FPS on the 3700 and 152 on the 5800. So I mean about 20 extra frames on the 5800X, so not bad really. There are some games that will benefit from some extra frames and Doom Eternal is just super highly optimized for a lot of different CPUs as it is. So to gain about 20 more FPS, you do see this game on the CPU reportedly go up to the 200 FPS marks. I did record this on my NVIDIA graphics card with the GeForce experience. So there is some FPS loss on the recordings, but I did this without the recordings on the MSI Afterburner. And these are all 1080p or 2560 by 1080 and ultra settings. Switching the tone to Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. I haven't played this game in a long ass time. The Ryzen 7 3700. 170 FPS and the Ryzen 7 5800 with 183 FPS. So about 13 more FPS. Uh, the 1% lows look better, but the minimum is ironically the same, which is kind of funny. Um, this game has a new season and it has also DLSS uh, support now. So I did leave this on the balanced option to almost hit 200 FPS, the Hertz on my monitor. So the it's crazy. These new CPUs and these new graphics cards or just pushing the re uh, refresh rate of monitors to the absolute max. And uh, I, I do, I'm booty in certain situations. I don't know why I didn't build a wall here. This guy shreds me here in a second. And uh, yeah, so this here, the next game, this is on the 5700 uh, Ryzen 7 5800X. I don't know how this guy didn't kill me or how he didn't die. But uh, yeah, it's a 1v1 situation on the good old Fortnite. Run out of ammo, or actually, I don't know if I ran out of ammo there. I'm just freaking out because, like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Oh! And I, ha I hit him with 11 damage. Oh, the fucking greatest! Look at that dragon, bro! Fucking number one! Switching over to a game that doesn't work, Cyberpunk 2077. And on the 3700X, this game definitely appreciates more cores. And the Ryzen 7 5800 does a 90 FPS average, and the Ryzen 7 doing a 73% average. This is also DLSS on balanced. So it hits a pretty high frame rates, honestly. The new update didn't add anything worthwhile to me personally, but it looks pretty good. And uh, punch people. Trying to be in like high crowded environments, people tend to not die as easy as they used to, that I remember. Anyways, Cyberpunk, still a pretty good benchmarking game, but pretty irrelevant when it comes to performance. The game does look great, but uh, yeah, there's some still a lot of issues with this game. If I can shoot a guy ten times in the head with a pistol and he doesn't die, it's pretty pretty weird in my personal opinion. So guys, that's it. That's my uh, 3700 to 5800 uh, experience. And personally, for the price that I paid, it's pretty good. I was really hoping for a 5900X, 12 cores, 12, uh, 24 threads, but we can't get everything that we want. And Micro Center is constantly not having those in stock because it's the world's fastest CPU at the moment. So right now, we're going to have to wait until I can test this further. But comparatively to last gen Ryzen, the 3700 to the 5800, not bad in terms of performance. I got about 20 FPS on average from most games. 
And um, I will say the bang for the buck for the 3700s for both CPUs that I've managed to purchase. I have basically bought two 3700s for the price of not even a brand new 3700. And I did get one used and I got one that was used for about three months. So I would say the 3700, I think if you can get it for the right price, is probably going to be the budget king. And if you really want to get a faster CPU... I would probably recommend the thirty or the fifty six hundred X, which is now readily available pretty much everywhere, and it's uh, six cores, twelve threads. If you really do need the extra cores and threads, I would definitely recommend the thirty seven hundred X. I would like to do a comparative video from the fifty six hundred X to the thirty seven hundred X in the near future, as I do have a fifty six hundred X laying around here. So I'd like to do a comparative benchmark to the past and to this one soon. So, guys, if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe. Like the video if you show the support. It makes the YouTube algorithm support my channel so much with this small viewership that I do get. And I'd appreciate it a lot. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.